I'm Bei Bei Song, host of Essinova. Multiple myeloma is a cancer of the, the plasma cell. It is the second most prevalent blood cancer type after non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Today in Boston at the IBC Cancer Drug Development Conference, I have the opportunity to speak to Dr. Ken Anderson, who is a world-renowned expert in multiple myeloma. Dr. Anderson is the chief of a division of hematologic neoplasia at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and the Kraft Family Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. Very nice to meet you, Professor Anderson. Very nice to be here. Thank you for taking my interview. Thank you. Uh, so we'll start with multiple myeloma, and then perhaps we can talk about uh, the cancer drug development in general, as you see it. Okay. So uh, multiple myeloma, I have to admit, before uh, deciding to interview you, I did not know much or anything about it. Mm -hmm. So between, say, 10 being the worst possible, there's no cure, death in three months, and horrible pain. Between that and, and say perhaps one, you know, it's some kind of cancer, but rather manageable. There are treatments uh, available and you, ha you can have actually a relatively happy and productive life. Where would um, multiple myeloma rank? Well, I think um, historically yeah. myeloma would have ranked among the worst of all cancers. Okay. Um, in 1962, which is less than 50 years ago, it was first treated with melphalan and prednisone oral mm -hmm. treatments. Right. Before that, it was um, very quickly fatal. Mm. But with those oral agents, uh, people lived on average two to three years. Okay. And then came along in the 1980s high dose treatment uh, with alkylating agents like melphalan and first bone marrow transplant and subsequently stem cell transplant. Mm. And then the median survival increased to four to five years. Okay. But I'm very thrilled and happy to report yeah. um, that since 1998, uh, with the advent of novel targeted therapies, those are treatments that target the tumor in its microenvironment and can achieve responses that conventional therapies have not been able to do. Uh, since that, uh, we've really had remarkable progress. So in the last five years, we have four new FDA-approved drugs. Um, they have served as the basis for six different FDA-approved strategies. And the proof and the very exciting news now is that the survival of patients with myeloma has at least doubled to mm -hmm. about seven to eight years. Okay. And so on your scale of one to 10, <laughs> We're moving down the scale considerably. Oh, We're yeah. getting towards a one or a two, uh -huh. as many patients have uh, myeloma as a chronic illness. Um, I honestly think that with combinations of novel agents, three and four drugs uh, predicated upon science, that the, it is realistic to say that cure is on the horizon. Does that mean that the, um, the, the four, you said, the four mm -hmm. approved drugs you use them together? Well, what's happened is we, the drugs are thalidomide, lenalidomide, uh -huh. bortezomib, and bortezomib and doxyl. Okay. And each of those agents was shown first to be very effective in far advanced myeloma, so-called relapsed refractory disease. Right, right. That was unresponsive to any other treatments. Uh -huh. And then what happens is they move to the forefront and they're tested in patients as the very first treatment for their newly diagnosed disease. Okay. And there they achieve unprecedented results. Okay. And very excitingly, um, this meeting has um, a very exciting theme about combination treatments. Combination treatments are exciting because when cancer has been cured in the past, such as in childhood leukemia, mm -hmm. Hodgkin's disease, non-Hodgkin's mm -hmm. lymphoma, testicular cancer. It's always been with combinations. Hmm. And the combinations in the past have been empirically based. But what this meeting uh, represents and what progress in myeloma exemplifies very well is that if you use preclinical science, you can inform the combinations preclinical testing will document synergistic or additive benefit. And if you use those combinations to inform clinical trial design, it translates into major success. So I'll give you the example. We have two of our novel agents are lenalidomide and bortezomib. 
each is very active by themselves. Bortezomib, by the way, is, is Velcade? Bortezomib is Velcade or the proteasome inhibitor, and oh, right. lenalidomide is an immunomodulatory agent. Uh -huh. And both are approved initially for relapsed myeloma or advanced disease. As it turns out, the science predicted that putting those two drugs together would achieve synergistic mm -hmm. myeloma cell death. Mm -hmm. And based on that science, clinical trials have now shown that even in advanced myeloma, uh, where there is no response to either drug alone, about 60% of the time the combination is effective. Really? And then if you follow my uh, sequence here, if you mm -hmm. move that effective combination or mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. to the initial management, mm -hmm. um, lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone along with it, 100% mm -hmm. of patients respond at mm -hmm. when they receive this as their initial therapy. And three quarters uh, get a very good or better response. So mm -hmm. it's remarkable. Uh, results that we simply have not been able to achieve before. But it's a reflection of the advancement of drugs that target the tumor in the microenvironment based on science. And secondly, the combinations informed on science showing more tumor cell killing, avoiding drug resistance, and as it turns out, when you use drugs in combination, you can use lower doses, so the side effect profile is much more beneficial for patients. Do you believe that this is uh, representative of where you think the cancer treatment might be going in general, or is there something unique about uh, um, liquid cancer, I mean, blood right. cancer? Right. I don't think there is anything unique about multiple myeloma or other blood cancers. Mm -hmm. I will say um, that chemotherapy initially was used in leukemia. Mm -hmm. Combination chemotherapy was mm -hmm. originally developed in the mm -hmm. blood cancers. But that's honestly because it's easier for us to get our tumor cells from the blood or the bone marrow and study in models um, more readily than perhaps our colleagues with lung cancer or breast cancer or brain cancer where the cells simply are harder to get to study. But I think the concept and the treatment paradigms are all going to be the same. And the theme that's represented in, at this meeting is that um, we do need to use combinations of therapies. That will be in liquid cancers as well as in solid tumors. Mm -hmm. But what we can do that we haven't been able to do before is understand um, what pathways are inhibited, a growth or a survival or a drug resistance circuit can be inhibited specifically. And then what are the uh, escape mechanisms that cancer cells develop and so the combination therapy would be predicated or designed to not only hit the pathways that are responsible for growth survival and drug resistance, but also to combine those with agents that block the escape routes that cancers have had in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's combination therapy, if you will, but it's combination targeted therapies uh, predicated upon uh, preclinical science suggesting that if you combine agent A with agent B, you will get the whole greater than the sum of its parts, you'll get synergistic killing. 